Bibles, let's turn to the book of James, chapter number four. James chapter number four tonight. It's been a good day in church. Two saved, amen. That's what we do it for. Got a herd of young and running around. Amen. James chapter number four. We're going to talk a little bit tonight uh, on on prayer and some reasons why the Lord wants us to pray. James chapter number four and verse number two. James chapter number four, or I'm sorry, verse number three. The Bible says, "Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss." that ye may consume it upon your lust. Look at verse number, I'm sorry, verse number two. Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight in war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Amen. Ye have not because ye ask not. The Lord simply says right there, you have not because you ask not. Amen. I remember uh, growing up a lot of times, uh, uh, going to my granny's house and, and uh, she, my, my granddaddy and my grandmama always had this big old jar. And I wish I could find them today. I, can't, I hadn't seen them since I was a kid, but they had these big suckers. They're about this big. And uh, I remember us as kids, we'd go over to their house. And, man, I remember sitting there. We'd sit there and stare at that, stare at that jar. And, but my mama, she always threatened my life, Brother Eddie. She said, if you go in here and you ask for anything, I'm going to whoop you. I don't know why my parents are that way, but I'm the same way. Uh, we went down there but this weekend. I told Bo uh, when we went to Miss Brother Mike's sister, I said, don't you go in there and ask for nothing. You hear me? You just, you just, and I don't know what it is about parents, but we just don't want our kids asking for anything. And uh, my granny, she knew. She knew that my mama was probably because my mama got it from her more than likely. But she'd always say to us, well, you have not because you ask not. And we'd look at, I'd look at my mama, and she'd just get, so I said, Granny, can I have one? And so we'd go in there, but then, you know, one turned into two, turned into a pocket full before we left. But it, it, it's funny because we always, we have this thing in our mind about asking. Amen. We have this thing in our heart sometimes about asking somebody for something or asking some somebody for some help. But I want to tell you tonight that the Lord Jesus Christ is not like any Body else, amen. He wants us to ask, and I want us to understand tonight that a lot of times uh, we we may have that mindset of, well, I can't go to the Lord for this, I can't go to the Lord for that. That's too small. It's just, you know, what what can He do with this, or what can he, this problem? Maybe sometimes we think it's too big of a problem. Sometimes we think it's just simply too small. Maybe it's too silly for such a big God. But I want to tell you tonight that nothing. It's too big or too little for you to ask in prayer. And man, I want to look at a few things tonight. Number one, first, asking recognizes our position. Asking recognizes our position. Several different times in Scripture, this particular word is used in Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 7 suggests that one, asking is in a lower position than the one who is being petitioned or asked of. It is used by the priest, used of the priest, uh, asking Pilate to crucify Jesus in, in Luke chapter uh, number 23 because they were in such a lower position. Also, it, uh, in uh, the subjects asking peace from a king in Acts 12, 20, and of a child asking something from a parent in Matthew 7, verses 9 through 10, when, when we ask something of the Lord, we are implying that he is over us. We are recognizing our position to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's, it's, it's honoring Him. It's asking Him. It's showing Him that He is the Lord of our lives. Amen. God would like for us to recognize His authority when we ask in prayer. Amen. It's a good thing for us to understand and to realize uh, what, what our position is when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that he is the king. Amen. Just as I preached this morning, that he is our Lord. He is our master. He's the one who is in control of our life. He's the one that's in control of everything that we do or he ought to be. And when we come to him and we ask him, we are then recognizing that position and letting him know and showing him that he is our Lord. Amen. That he is our master. He's in control. And man, I, 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 wanted, I want us to get it through our heads tonight uh, that we ought to just ask. Amen. No matter what it is, whether it's a bill, whether it's a, whether it's a new bass boat, somebody say amen. Amen. If we just ask. It may not come, amen. It may not happen, but hey, it never hurts to ask. Amen, and the Lord knows exactly what's best for us in our lives. Every time that boy asks me for something, he don't get it. Sometimes he does, sometimes he don't. But listen, the Lord Jesus Christ knows what's best for us, and also when we ask, it, we recognize our position and his position over us. Amen. Secondly, asking recognizes our poverty. Not just our position, but it recognizes our poverty. Obviously, we would not be asking unless we had a need. Amen. The very fact that we are asking implies that we have a need. We're needy people. Humans frequently have a difficult time admitting that we have needs. Amen. Just, just a simple fact of human beings, sometimes we have a difficulty admitting that we have a need. Amen. I know a lot of times uh, in, 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 our, in my life growing up, there's been times that I've needed something and I didn't want to ask for it because it just it shows, it, it shows that I, I have a weakness. It shows that I have a need. And sometimes we, we get to that place where we have that pride built up in us. Well, I don't want to ask for it. I don't want to go to this person because I know they can help me, but I don't want to go to them because then they'll know that I'm not, I don't have them as much money as I say I do sometimes. And don't look like I have it all together. Like I, like I imply that I do sometimes. And sometimes we have to just get to the place where we're willing to go and get the help that we need. Amen. And because it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're, it doesn't mean that we're, uh, 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 there's, that we're doing anything wrong necessarily. It just means that we have a need. Amen. I mean, those missionaries on mission fields, they have needs and they come to us and, and they, they come to, the, to their brethren. They ask, they go to the Lord in prayer because they have a need. Amen. If you don't think that if I met somebody as a millionaire, you don't think I wouldn't go to them about Grace Baptist Church? You're crazy, man. If I met somebody and I knew they had the funds to fund us, man, I'd go to them. I'd, hey, you have not? Because you ask not. Amen. If I Listen, if I knew a millionaire, I'd go to them and say, hey, we need, to, we need this, we need that. We need to pay off some stuff. Amen. Have not because you ask not. You just never know. You never know. But the, the priority is going to the Lord Jesus Christ and recognizing that we have a need. But the fact is, all of us, all of us in here tonight need the Lord. God asked us to pray in order to remind us of our need for him. Because sometimes in our life, we kind of forget, don't we? I do. A lot of times in my life, there's been times in my life that that I've I've uh, felt like I had it all together, and I I knew what was best for me, and I knew what I needed, and I knew, so on. But the fact is, the fact is that the Lord Jesus Christ knows better than I do, and I ought to just go to Him and ask. Amen. Amen. Thirdly, third asking develops our persistence. Asking develops our persistence. The word persistence, Matthew 7, 7 implies continuous action. Keep on asking. God wants us to be persistent in prayer. In Daniel 10, the prophet had been fasting for three weeks, but God had already answered the prayer on day one. Persistence. He don't want us to just, he don't want us to just ask and then give up. 
Sometimes the Lord Jesus Christ, sometimes the Lord Jesus Christ might, he's got something for us and we ask. Maybe he don't want us to stop asking right now. He, he, he might have already answered the prayer, but because we stopped asking, he, he then d decided, you know what, maybe he don't really want it as bad as he puts on. The Lord Jesus Christ wants us to be persistent in prayer. Daily asking. Daily going to Him. When we have a need and understanding that, hey, sometimes it's not going to come on the first knock. It's not going to come on the first, hey, can I have this? It's not going to come on the first, Lord, I need this. It's not going to come the very first time that you bow your knee and you bow your head and you ask Him. It might not work out that way. He wants us to keep coming and to keep coming and to keep coming and to keep coming sometimes. It's not always on the very first knock. Amen. And that also develops some patience, which I don't have. Amen. I saw a video just a little bit ago before I came in here. A reporter was asking a little boy. She had walked out of the door, or she was walking into a building, and a young boy about Bo's age held the door for her. And, uh, he said, ladies first. So she, she thought, I guess she thought that was something. She videoed it. She, she went to the boy and she said, what was that you said to me when, when you opened the door? He said, ladies first. And he said, <laughs> she said, where, do you, where did you learn that from? And I guess it was an uncle or somebody. He said their name. He said, I learned it from so-and-so. He always, he said, he taught me that uh, ladies first because men are more patient. Amen. That's what he said. Little little bitty boy said, "My my papa or my uncle taught me ladies first because gentlemen have the, have more patience and we can handle waiting for the ladies to come through before we do." And I thought somebody has taught this boy some messed up theology, man. And uh, I thought, man, that boy's learning from he's learning from somebody. Amen. And, uh, and so I, I, I looked at that and I laughed because, one, I laugh because of what his uncle's teaching him. Number two, I laugh because I know it's just simply not true. Amen. I know that when it comes to me, my patience is about as thick as one of these uh, pages of paper on this Bible right here. Amen. I don't have the patience. I don't. I'm trying to work on it. And a lot of times, and uh, you know, the Lord's been working on my patience since I was a boy. And uh, just like just like that boy right there, we drove down there to fish, and it's about a four-hour drive. And man, I, I just are we there yet? When are we gonna be there? I'm ready to go fishing, Daddy. Can we go? Well, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And that's just like me sometimes when I go to the Lord and I know that we have a need. And when I pray, we pray. Uh, I've been praying here in the church, and uh, and 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 I pray, Lord, uh, send members and send people and send money and send this and send that. And sometimes I, I walk in here and I think it's just going to happen just like that, or I think it's just going and it's just not. It's not going to. It's going to take patience. It's, it's going to take persistence. It's going to take me praying that every day, and the Lord seeing how serious do you really want that. Amen? Persistence. Persistence. And finally, asking asking demands some particulars. Yeah. Particulars. A lot of times we pray in these vague generalities, just, you know, Lord, you know, save, you know, have, Lord, bless the missionaries. Lord, be with the missionaries. Lord, be with, uh, be with my kids today. But the Lord, sometimes He wants us to get specific. He wants us to be particular. He wants us to be specific about the things that we are praying about. Amen? Sometimes God longs for us to ask Him for the little things in life. You think it's funny, but sometimes... Just a simple parking spot at the grocery store. Amen. A lot of we just don't think he cares about that stuff. When, when in reality, he cares. He cares about every aspect of your life. Well, here's what we have to understand about this persistence: is this, and I talked about it this morning. 
What did it cost God to have a relationship with you? It cost his son, his life, to have a relationship with you. And for us to think any area or aspect of our life, of our Christian life, after we get saved and accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, to think that he would overlook any area of our life is silly on our part. To think that he would, uh, he would think that you asking for a grocery store parking spot that, so you didn't have to walk so far or so that you could feel safe when you're walking out to your car. To think that he would overlook that is, man, we're missing out on a lot of uh, blessings in our life because we don't think he cares about the little things. When he cares about every single area, every single aspect of your life. The Bible says that he used to come and he used to walk with Adam and Eve in the garden and he used to just have fellowship with them. Why? Because he cares about the little things. We started praying as soon as Bo and Reese both were born. One of our prayers every night was, Lord, save them at a young age. Lord, save them at a young age. And they even, they even picked up on it when they pray at night. Lord, save, Bo would say, Lord, save Bo and Reese at a young age. And last year, I got to lead him to Christ. And when I led him to Christ in his bedroom, the very first thing I thought of was him saying, Lord, save Bo and Reese at a young age. Us praying that prayer every night, every night, every night. And we pray it for her. She's next. One of these days, she's going to get saved soon, and I believe it. Why? Because we pray it every day. Lord, save her at a young age. Why? I don't want to wait till they're 16. I don't want to wait till they're 18. I don't want them to wait till they're 20. I don't want them to wait till they're 30. I want God to save them now. I want them to miss out on as much uh, of a life of sin as they possibly can. It cost God a lot to give us access into the throne room. It cost him his son, the blood of Jesus Christ. It cost that for us to be able to have access into the throne room. And man, for us to just, us to just visit that throne room every now and again. Man, what a shame on our part. And not to mention the fact that we're just missing out, man. We're missing out. Never let us cease to, the, to marvel at the irrationality of the fact that God wants to hear from us. Prayer should, not be a, should, should, be a, should be as natural to the Christian as breathing. Our spiritual life depends on it. And so we really ought to understand that every morning we wake, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray in your car. Pray while you're sitting on the lawnmower. Pray while you're in the shower. Pray while you're, pray while you're working. I know a lot of times we overlook prayer, and that's a shame. This book right here and our prayer life should be constant. We should have a constant relationship. We should have a constant one-on-one -on -one with the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because it costs him some things. It costs a lot for us to be able to have that. It costs a lot for us to be able to have that relationship, to, to be able to go to him and say, Lord, let, this, let the hamburger be on sale this week because I ain't got a whole lot of money. We laugh about it, but man, it's true. Lord, I'm broke this week. If you don't mind, would you let Kroger's have a sale? Amen. Lord, I, I, I'm running a little bit short this week. If you don't mind, let me find a coupon somewhere for my medicine. We think it's silly. We think it's crazy. But he's standing there thinking, I'm taking this very seriously. And if y'all don't mind, would y'all please start praying for gas prices to go back down, somebody? Amen. I think we, we quit praying about gas prices when Trump was in. And the Lord said, okay, I'm going to jack them back up again. Amen. 
We need to start praying for the gas prices. Somebody say amen. amen. We just overlook. We some, Sometimes we just don't think about all the little things. It's important for us to recognize our position when it comes to prayer. It's important for us to recognize the fact that we need Him. We're needy. Our poverty. It's important for us to recognize our persistence and the particulars. We ought to be persistent, Brother Jim. That's why I've, I, I'm so excited about this Wednesday prayer meetings up here on Wednesdays. And, and you know what's you know what's neat about that? Speaking of persistence, Wednesday morning at noon, we're praying for lost family members and we're praying for prodigals. That's what we prayed. For. We mentioned a lot of prodigals. And then Wednesday night prayer meeting, we did the same thing. Amen. When I come in here to church every day, uh, on my in my Bible, I've got a prayer. In my office, I've got a prayer book, and I keep our prayer list. And I'm praying over them again. Persistence. And I can't help but think that God's going to start saying, hold on a minute. They must be pretty serious about this thing. They must be pretty serious about that, that grandson that used to come to church here, but he don't come here no more. Maybe I'm going to start working on his heart. It's going to take us praying. It's going to take us being persistent. It's going to take us understanding our position when it comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's going to take us being particular about exactly what it is we want to see God do in our lives. Brother Ed, if you don't mind, I'd like to mention your house. Is that okay? Brother Ed, we've been praying for him. To, we've been praying for them to find a house. Wednesday. Is that not when it happened? Wednesday. Mention it at the lunch prayer. At 12 o'clock and at 2 o'clock, we went and looked at a house. That's the one. Amen. Brother Ed was sitting there and he was thinking, he thought, man, I've looked at so many. He said, I just don't think this will be the one. I said, Brother Ed, it's worth going to look at. He said, you're right. And he said, called me a little bit later. He said, I think we might have found our house. Amen. You don't think it, you think this stuff don't matter to him? And Brother Jim, if, if God answered that prayer that quick on Wednesday, what, what about the other prayer requests we mentioned on Wednesday? God might already be working. And we just don't even know it yet. Amen. It matters to him. There's a song that Lindsay sings. It's called It Matters to the Master. And it does. Here, I know I mention my children a lot, but I think a lot of times when God looks at us, I mean, he, he's, we're, we're, the, we're, ch we're children of His. And so when I think about my kids, I think about how I look at their lives and I watch the things that they do, and the little things matter to me. Every little thing they do, I care about. Amen. All the way down to their shoes and make sure they got a belt on and make sure he's got his shirt tucked in. All the little things matter. The fact that when we go, sometimes we go to the store, Brother Bob, we went to the other day to Tractor Supply, wanted a new target for his BB gun. And I thought, you know what? That matters to me. So what did dad do? Bought him a new target for his BB gun. He's always talking about, I, I need some more, dad, I need some more BBs. I need some more BBs. Took him to academy. I said, get the biggest box you can find, son. He, he was down there, he was down there measuring them. He bought a box of 6,000, man. And he's already about a quarter of the way through. Hey, Amen. Y'all pray for the windows around our house. Amen. And all the birds and squirrels, they don't stand a chance. 
you know, sometimes, sometimes a lot, you know, as parents, we, we get it, we get stuck on the word no, and we, no, you don't need this, you don't need that. But then every now and then, just like we went in a we went in a gas station on the way down there this weekend, and Bo was walking through them aisles, combing them aisles. And normally, I, I tell him just stay with me, don't ask for nothing. We're just going in to get gas or whatever. He's over. There, he's like, Dad, look at this cap gun. And we was on a little fishing trip. I said, you know what? Get it. I tell you what, get that pack of 200 uh, uh, caps too. Get the get the bubble gum. Get it, son. Get it. We was in, we was in Bass Pro Shop walking through the aisles, and he was like, Dad, can I get these trick worms? How about these, Dad? I said, Get it, boy. Get it. And sometimes. I can't help but think that the Lord Jesus Christ is sitting up there thinking, man, I wish he'd just ask me. I wish he'd just come to me and just ask me. I remember uh, I remember growing up as the older I got, the older I got in my teenage years, when I just quit asking for stuff from my parents. I quit going to them about advice, and I quit going to them about schoolwork, and I quit going to them about homework, and I quit. And I thought, you know, I can get this on my own. When really they were just thinking, man, I wish he'd just ask. I wish he'd just ask. Amen. That's the way the Lord Jesus Christ is. We need to understand that. Amen. Those four things about prayer. Amen. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. I thank you for your, your word. I thank you for what it means. I thank you, Lord, that we can look at it and that we can understand what, it, what it's trying to tell us. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we have access to pray. And Lord, I'm th so thankful. And Lord, I pray, God, that we would use that access more often. Lord, I pray, God, that you would burden it on our hearts to be more faithful to prayer and asking. Lord, I sure do love you, and I thank you, and I praise you for all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I didn't want to keep you.